Bara bing, bara boom. Bara bing, bara boom. Bara bing, bara boom. Bara bing, bara boom. Bara, bara, bara bing, bara boom. Bara boom, boom, bing, bing, boom, bara bum. Bing Crosby's boom, boom. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram. It's the Donald Trump. Thank you for the on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter account. Ring the bell button. Gay squad. Bang! Magambo. Kushua. Mogambo. Sorry, I keep saying Mogambo. 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 Mo. 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 Not mo. Mo. Not ma. Mo. Anyways. We already reviewed that if you haven't seen yeah. that one. Uh, today we review, we're doing a movie review. We are reviewing the uh, 2016 Hindi film, Dear Zindagi. Dear Life. Which means, yeah, Dear Life. Yeah. Um, which is probably one of the first words I learned just by watching films. Is Zindagi. Zindagi. Probably. They use it a yeah, ton. All the time. All the that time. and Dill. Yeah. Those are the two biggest words used constantly. Um, but this is a directed and written by uh, Gu Gauri. Yeah, Gauri, uh, Shindi, forgive me for mispronouncing yes. your name. Starring um, basically uh, Ali Abad and Shah Rukh Khan. Yep. And then a, a couple other people, basically. Um, but let, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back. This is going to be a 100 spoiler review. It came out in 2016. That's just how we like to do things. Yep. Uh, but Rick, your initial thoughts, please. <laughs> what do Zir Zindagi and Ragu have in common? I'm not a big fan of either one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I love how you bought that specifically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it worked. It worked. That's um, funny. Yeah, I. So uh, I can explain why. There's some things in it that I liked. Mm -hmm. um, the story was fine. Mm -hmm. um, the The biggest gripe I have with it. And obviously, runtime was too long, but you can't. That can't be a gripe with an Indian film because mm -hmm. we know why they make them that long. Yeah. Um, I felt like the characters themselves were okay. They weren't particularly fleshed out or uh, deeply meaningful to me. The biggest problem I had was in the believability factor, mm -hmm. which for me is the number one yeah. thing. There were so many continuity errors, I got angry. So I just, mm -hmm. it, it, it was unforgivable to me. Yeah. The level of both prop and lighting continuity errors that were shockingly lazy. Mm. Um, but even if those were not there uh, as a whole, it just kind of left me with, I, I felt like it could have been so much more than it was because I think the story itself has great potential, mm -hmm. but it just didn't, it didn't float my boat. I agree with you. Um, it, it, it was a, a big disappointment to me. Because I, I, very, I was very disappointed. I had been looking what I was forward to this film. Yeah, yeah. Um, that being said, uh, my favorite parts were probably the scenes between Shah Rukh and Alia. Yes. Um, so they the show, <laughs> it took way too long for Shah Rukh to get involved into the film. Way too long. <laughs> like, the whole like my wife even said she was like, "This is taking a while to get going, isn't it?" Yeah. <laughs> the whole first 45 minutes yeah. didn't need to be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 100%. Um, but yeah, so my, my, and we'll talk about them, but that they were my, that them together in their scenes Was the were my part favorite parts. Agreed. Um, that I think they had good chemistry together. Um, I think they, um, the, the writing was probably the most most believable in those parts. Yep. And um, it, it just shows you the difference between when, uh, when someone like an Alia, who who is still a young actor, mm -hmm. but was young with this as well, this is five years ago and before Rozzy, where you can see huge growth between this and Rozzy. And then um, obviously Gully Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you can see what happens when a young actor is working with a seasoned veteran because mm -hmm. her best parts were when she was working with us. Okay, yeah. except for she had a good moment, though I was distracted by the continuity errors. Mm -hmm. Her meltdown at, at the yeah. dinner, that, yeah. that was a nice moment. And she never did anything, there was never no. anything bad. I think the biggest issues in it, and we'll get into all of it, but my biggest issues were actually writing and directing. It was, 
And I found it's out... It's shocking for this being the same director and writer of English Vinglish. Actually, English. I, at first I saw, no, this is English, and then I was, and then I thought about my problems with English Vinglish. Mm. Exact same thing. So if you remember wow. my pro, even though my problems with English Vinglish, if you, even though I, I enjoyed the film as a whole, very different film. Very, <laughs> so very different. you can forgive a lot more in that kind of film sure. than you can this film, which is trying to be a lot more serious and obviously a very serious subject matter that yeah. I... Obviously, I love that part of the whole story of the mental health and, and dealing with that. And it's not just a clinically depressed person that needs therapy. It's in, in all these different issues right. that go into it. That, I enjoyed that part as well. But this is a very different film. And that had Sri Devi carrying it with her, her lovability and, and, and all that. But my issues I had with English for English were the believability and dialogue. Same exact thing in terms of not with Sri Devi, but like with everyone else in that film. I remember especially the classroom people, which you didn't... You, yeah, you, I liked. You, you liked, but that was... I, I literally hated every single scene with I him. I know you it. did. <laughs> and that was almost identical to some of the issues I had in this. Okay. Because all the, the writing, it was... I can almost equate it to how we thought about Venom, right? Right. Venom, it was like... I, it was a miracle that I enjoyed that film. Right. Because of how... Tom Hardy's so good. ...amateur right. the writing was. Right. It's, it's hard to make um, scenes... That, with terrible writing, even when you have great actors like Michelle Williams and Tom Hardy, but I mean, they, they did it. It was bad writing. <laughs> and it's like, a lot of it just seemed like this is what the script says. And the director was like, I want, I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. Like when she, I could clearly tell the director was telling her to, and when she was like going through uh, something in, in her apartment, I do this. Pretend like you're just right. Pretend like you're just antsy. Right. And, and I'm like, these are clear directorial director um, notes. Right. That were given to every actor because even an actor who is fantastic in Daily Crimes and Made in Heaven was made like her her dialogue was almost cringy at times. And I know that actress is a phenomenal actress. Preach, preach, <laughs> so Mormon. it's like <laughs> it's it's not her. Yeah. Um, and so it, it fell into those categories with Ali as well. Is it's just that the dialogue was so you know, almost amateur. It's what it felt like. I agree. Which is a shame because yeah. I love the overall story of, you know, more people need to go to the uh, to therapy and not just for, you know, if they're clinically depressed or if, you know, somebody's cheating on them. It's just people have different mental health needs and everybody needs somebody to talk to. Yes. And she had abandonment issues and all that. And so the, all of that could have been like, something that you could have really gripped to in the film but like the way it was delivered because of the dialogue even with the parents like she had this big outburst with the parents and the mom was like oh, no man she's gone can't can't do anything now and i know these actors in those scenes are like veterans right and so it's like it was a clear writing and directing n choices that this director made that it's just, I didn't understand. Like, it didn't seem natural most of the Correct. time, right? Correct. It didn't seem like natural Outside uh, of when, interactions. basically, for the most part, when SRK and Alia were in their therapy sessions. And best parts of the film. By far the best parts of the film. And there were aspects of what Alia was dealing with with her friends that I was having a, a hard time um, caring about because mm -hmm. so much of what she was dealing with in the beginning, even when we find out later the scar she's dealing with and the trauma she has from yeah. childhood, yeah. there were a lot of things she was dealing with that the way it was written and the way that it was directed, I found her to be a bit of a spoiled brat and annoying sometimes. Yeah. And I didn't want to feel that way about her because I, I, I felt like I can tell from the way the story's going, that's not what you're yeah. wanting from us. You're wanting us to see her going from relationship to relationship because of the reasons you find out later in therapy. Yeah. But yeah. it seemed to be disconnected yeah. in its I think line. what they were trying to do is basically like showing that mental health is not this thing that you can just pinpoint. Obviously, she lashed out at a lot of her friends just randomly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that they were trying to show, like mental health can affect people to, to do those random things. Yeah. But I agree, it, I don't think it was done very well in, in terms of writing and making you, and, making it a, like a clear pattern. And we understand that the difference in the way mental health has been presented in American cinema versus Indian cinema is very different throughout history. I mean, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was 1970, mm -hmm. and that was brutally honest about the problems that can happen in the mental health world. So addressing mental health issues in America has been going on for a very, very long time. It even happened with Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which is about alcoholism, but it's a mental health thing. 
And this was probably something, I'm sure many of you may be commenting, that this was uh, somewhat groundbreaking for its subject matter. And mm -hmm. that's that's great. And that's what I mean by the fact that the story itself- I enjoyed the overall story of that. Had great yeah. potential. Uh, and the, the, when, it, when it comes to the believability factor, the, I took, I'm not gonna do it. I'll do an afterthought. If you wanna see it on my channel, I'll do an afterthought about this, yeah. where I go into some of the detail about the things. They were like this, and I'll show you the pictures on my afterthought. There were lighting problems with continuity where it's obviously a two camera setup, not two cameras at the same time. It means they do one POV over Alia's shoulder and yeah. one POV over the mom's shoulder. Yeah. And the lighting is definitively different. There was one time with, with SRK and her where it's over his shoulder looking at her and the lighting has full bright light uh, on coming on her and then none of it is, is falling on SRK. Mm -hmm. They go over her shoulder and his hair is brightly lit, his shoulder is brightly lit. And when they go back and forth between the two, the lighting is completely changed on him. Mm -hmm. Another one that was just astonishing, I'd been paying attention to it a lot, that just I just flat out said, I grabbed my head and said, you've gotta be kidding me. When she's at the boyfriend, the, the singer's house, and they're drinking wine, they're walking from where they were behind the thing with their glasses of wine and they sit on the chair and she sits on his lap to talk. They set both of their wine glasses down on the counter in the kitchen. He sits down, she gets on his lap, he crosses his leg and they immediately cut to her talking mid-sentence and he's holding his wine glass. It just magically went from the kitchen counter to his hand. I noticed some of those as well. It happened on magnets on the refrigerator. It happened so much that I could only chalk it up to the fact that nobody there Forget having a continuity person. If you have experience on set, even if you're a background person, you're gonna pick up on those things and they were either rushing or they just didn't care. Yeah, And that's yeah. frustrating. But I do wanna talk about some of the stuff I did enjoy and that's mainly Shah Rukh Khan and, and Alia with them together. And even though I did have issues with some of the stuff Alia did earlier in the film, um, but I think I'm gonna chalk most of that up to writing because she did redeem herself many, many times in the scenes with Shah Rukh Khan and at the end, I thought she had a fantastic yeah, breakdown I wish the scene. last I wish the last but 25 minutes was the movie. Yeah, it goes to show you when you have a seasoned writer and director like Zoya directing somebody uh, like Alia and what a great performance she can give. And we've seen it in Razi, and I thought she did a fantastic, fantastic job. job in yeah, would a punch job, and I thought she did a fantastic job in Highway. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but like when you have a veteran director and writer as opposed to somebody who's a, I think this is only her second film. You yeah, know, you know we we loved English for English. Uh, love it. <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> films. Not sure to harp. It's on, on my favorite list of all time. Um, but yeah, you can definitely tell that. But her scenes with Shah Rukh Khan. I think are, are were very very strong. Almost it was almost like a. I don't know if they took inspiration from Goodwill Hunting a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with just that relationship. Sure. Not saying that's what they're doing, but I think it, 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 you had a little essence of that. A little bit in it. Yeah. Um, but I thought they had really good chemistry together. I loved. I'm hoping these are the kind of roles Shah Rukh Khan's going to start gravitating I know, to. I like more, it a lot. More character driven. Um, more more subtle. Uh, he's not he's not the leading man. Uh, in this in terms of he doesn't get the girl in the end even though that was a great kind of thing at the end where they were like she was like I like you which yeah is apparently a very common thing very in common therapy. and he said I like you too yeah if, in other words if I wasn't your therapist maybe I would I'd go out with you yeah but I loved and I was waiting because I knew we were gonna get there because mm -hmm. it was obvious that there was some chemistry I loved that throughout even though his style of therapy was very non-traditional uh, I didn't feel like he at any time crossed lines with her and mm -hmm. I appreciated that yeah. and her affectations and feelings for him made complete sense and I loved it's the best part of the film if all of the writing and everything had been that last scene her last session where SRK says to her this is good for us to communicate this and then she gives him a hug and there's that sense of man I don't you wish but he's mature enough to recognize this is a, a nice young girl. Thank God it's a character that's like, I'm not gonna take advantage of my position of authority over her. Yeah. The emotion she has for me is normal for her to have. Let this be something she can build her life on and move on from and be a good experience yeah. and me not pervert it in my yeah. position of power. That's yeah. probably my favorite yeah. thing to take away from this, even yeah. though I didn't like the movie. Yeah, I'm hoping he, he does more of these style of roles. Yeah. Um, because obviously, um, I don't know if you, but like if he did a film, and I know, 
Anya Akashia adores Shah Rukh Khan. But if he got to work with Shah Rukh Khan oh. and give him his dialogue, because that's one of, I think, I think we say it in every single thing, one of, I think, his strongest points as a director is his dialogue writing capabilities. Yes. And making everything so natural and believable. Um, so if you had, and I don't know if he ever will, because obviously we know Shah Rukh Khan is very conscious of his audience. Ah, I just, because <laughs> I know, I want, we've heard it in interviews. Uh, he, we have. Anyarag wants to work with and Shah Rukh Khan. If, if per some chance, Vishal Barbosh ever got to SRK's ears, sir, uh, I so understand, respect, and appreciate your love for your fans and recognize you are where you are because of the fans. I also believe that the fans who love you for who you are and not just what they get from you are going to want to watch you spread your thespianatic wings. Mm -hmm. And if you were to work on something that's outside of the purview of what you're normally doing, I think, yet, yeah, you're going you're gonna to abandon some folks, but I think that the diehards that love you are going to love watching you be the best version of you you can be, and I think that would be satisfying to you because you're an intelligent man. He's a good actor, too. And you're a good actor, and to see you partner and do something outside of the realm of, of what you're known for that is, is edgy, and that's the perfect combo. I would love to see him push to that place. Yeah. Love to see that. Yeah, and we know he did love you, Dar, in the beginning, and, and other oh. more villainous roles, but I'm talking more modern stuff. Yeah. He looks great with a beard. Uh, <laughs> you, think it, you think everybody looks great <laughs> with a beard. With a beard. Uh, Alia, like I said, uh, even though in the beginnings, I, there was some stuff that I'm gonna, I'm gonna chalk up to mostly writing, but there were some times that I was like, ah. This is not the normal Ollie I'm used to seeing. True. Um, but many times, especially towards the back end, when it was with Shao Khan or at the very end, she showed how talented of it is. Yeah, now. there's an, she has enough for as annoying as the first 45 minutes were, and I wasn't really enjoying yeah. watching what was going on. Same. There wasn't anything she was doing where I was uh, upset with her approach or her process no, in any way. The writing it was directing. just the writing. Yeah. And, and I, you can't deny the fact that there's just, it's like when we saw Gully Boy, but that was much better. The raw talent inside of the young woman is is just palpable. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The older she gets and the more varied her choices become, I can't like, wait to see some of her Obviously her next with the, the Sanjay. I, I, I completely wait. trust that man to Absolutely. bring out the performance of her. Absolutely. Obviously he's done it with Jahid Ranveer, he's done it with uh, the Pika, he's, I have, I have utmost confidence that that man and his writing, especially, yeah. uh, can bring out a great and, performance in Ali. And I think she's probably at a place in her career now that she wasn't in this, mm -hmm. where, and I may be wrong, but my suspicion would be that at this time in her life, director says jump, she says how high. Whereas now a director says something and she feels any sense of question about it and she's justification for it, she'll say, why would I do that when I could do this? And she'll put in her... Two I hope cents so. worth. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. She I think. Wouldn't. I mean, she started her own production house now, so she. Yeah, I can't imagine. She, she wants now. creative control um, to put out the content she wants, and um, it, when you, she's a big enough star now, she she can do whatever she wants. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, like I said, I loved the the scenes between them two. Favorite part? It could have been just in forty five minutes of just them in their sessions, just and I think cut it everything been, yeah. except their sessions and, and make it a forty five minute short, just short. A 23 minute short of. That'd be great. That would be. Oh, that'd be great. If it had just been a short film with their sessions, this would have been. You could, I think you could honestly cut, cut out everything. Literally, and, and, and just done the it. sessions. And yes. we would have picked up on what. Would what, have picked up on everything. What uh, her. Because that was not only the best performances, that was the best writing part. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, oh, I want to talk about the. the, the our, oh, yeah. Dolstam and Trevetti. Trevetti. Um, even though some of the songs weren't my taste in terms of like the beginning and break up with him, it was very poppy. Doesn't mean they were bad. I, my favorite was definitely the the one we reacted to. Uh, yeah. The, 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 towards the end. Yeah. I thought that was really nice. The score behind everything I thought was nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes very subtle at times. It was sometimes where it got a little too melodramatic. But that was something I can only think of two times. Yeah. That the the music. When what I say when I'm what I mean by that is when like music gets really K three G. You know, <laughs> when music gets really yeah. big in the back because they're trying to bring out that emotion behind you. It only happened, I think, twice. Uh, but overall, I thought Amit Trivedi did a really nice job uh, with his, um, um, his composition yeah. of the film. Agreed. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I didn't really think anything else much of any of the other actors uh, outside of Shah Rukh Khan and Alia. Even 
the lovely actors from um, yeah no Mies it's unfortunately of, um, the Made in Heaven and that yeah, I think it's just a lot of her dialogue was just like boy I wish you a, had better dialogue it's, it's <laughs> night and day between Made in Heaven and this yeah when you have a good writer yeah <laughs> And, Zoya, again. <laughs> and some help. Like, I, I, it pained me to watch them try to be drunk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, I, uh, we've said what we needed to say. About yeah, it. we really have. Uh, and, uh, so, and in case you're wondering, from an Italian's point of view. What are you going to do with that now? Donate it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw it away. If you want it, you can have it. I do not. But yeah, it. this this needs to go to somebody who would eat it because I won't donate it to a, a homeless shelter or something. Yeah, but. I'm not gonna eat it. Somebody will, and somebody should, and that's fine because it'll make them happy, but not me. <laughs> Anyways, what should be the next Shah Rukh Khan and the next Ali Abak film that we watch? Uh, and what should be in, just in general, I guess, what should be more of this Shah Rukh Khan? Yeah, let us know more from this side of Shah Rukh Khan down below. Thank you.